some of the most northern metro Atlanta suburbs, there's a good chance of you approaching Spaghetti Junction, I-85, and I-285. Once you are traveling through Spaghetti Junction, you may notice a 15-story high-rise circular-shaped building that resembles the Westin Hotel of downtown Atlanta. Offhand, many people will not figure out the name of the building or what it is used for. Today, we will go over the history of the structure and why it is in the current state today. Before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell icon so you never miss the latest updates from the channel. I will also be launching a Patreon soon so that you can support the channel even more. This structure was built as a hotel in 1973, being called the Presidential Hotel. It was named after the road it was located from at 4001 Presidential Parkway. This 88,000 square foot hotel features 234 units on 14 levels, conference rooms, retail space, and more. The hotel found itself as being a great landmark to Atlanta once the city began to grow rapidly with the construction of Tom Moreland Interchange, also known as Spaghetti Junction, which was completed in 1987, replacing an older cloverleaf interchange that dates to the 1950s. In 1987, the Presidential Hotel fell into debt and closed closed its doors after 14 years of operation. The reason behind it was often said that the construction of Spaghetti Junction caused too much traffic, which sparked a demise in business. Also, a lawsuit was placed against the then-owner, Joe Wang, that same year. This left the hotel being shuttered for about seven years until it was bought from the bank in 1995 and was renamed the Heights Hotel. The Heights Hotel was short-lived, closing after being in operation for only one year due to the high cost of building maintenance. It was purchased by Ramada and renamed Ramada Perimeter Northeast Hotel, just in time for the Atlanta Summer Olympics. The hotel was remodeled at the end of 1996, adding advertisement billboards to the roof of the building, facing Spaghetti Junction, and adding a nightclub to the building, which was later opened as Club Europe in 1997. Despite giving the building a fresh new look in the interior and making it mixed development, Ramada closed its doors for good in 2001, with another buyer already up for grabs. At this point, Club Europe remained open, as it wasn't included in the sale, due to being a separate joint venture with Ramada, having no rights upon it. Celebrity Business Suites purchased the building from Ramada, turning it into more of a multi-use office complex. The building was slightly renovated only by adding more conference rooms and office suites as well as getting a special window tent film installed on all windows to give it a more of a modern facade and to prevent excessive heat from entering the building caused by the sun. The building itself was being molded into more of a mixed development use by also having a lounge, ballrooms, hotel extended stay, and office suites for small businesses to rent out, all in one building. This was an attempt to revive the hotel by using a different strategy, but the concept wasn't good enough to keep the doors open. The hotel went up for auction in 2010 and was then purchased and renamed Presidential Boutique Condo Tell. It was subsequently leased out and renamed the Solaris Atlanta Building for a short period before the auction. The presidential boutique was managed by a man named Habib Asta and his partner Vincent, who at the time was operating the Club Europe that is connected to the hotel. Under his management, he used the same concept that celebrity business suites did, except for putting money into the facility in terms of upkeep. Management promised each tenant that they would have low rates and the enmities that come with the hotel. Tenants often claimed that the units advertised online were photoshopped and looked different in person. People also stated that the pests were out of control, rats roaming through the door, and the presence of mold. When further reading the reviews, one former resident stated, Please do not move into the presidential boutique condo tell. The new owners are liars, such as Vincent Liu and Habib Asta. Every month the hot water is always off. This building has no maintenance, and the security is sorry as hell. The building has a lot of electrical problems. This building is condemned with roaches and mold that will make you sick. If you go in back of the building, the garbage is always full. When I was living there, I had seen rats and a mouse running in and out of the building. Please don't waste your money, because the new owner is doing a lot of underhanded illegal stuff there at the Presidential Boutique Condo Tell. In 2011, another review was stated from a former resident saying, I cannot believe that this building is allowed to operate with so much mismanagement, code violations, and black mold in most units. Plain old slumlords. 
A nightmare and horror episode. Do not move here. You will be strong arm robbed by the manager Habib Asta as well, as all the in-house break-ins are committed by their own live-in security boys. You will also get a contact high from all the smoking in the building. Sad. Despite all the negative reviews, the mixed-use condominium continued to lease out rooms and office space continuing to collect rent from the tenants. In June 2011, the power was shut off briefly due to owing close to $58,000 to Georgia Power, which Asta claimed to pay at least $11,000 out of pocket just to have it turned back on. He blamed his business partner Vincent for not paying his half. With rising temperatures in Atlanta during the summertime, residents were left in the heat. In early February 2012, it was reported that there was a dispute between the ownership of the property between Asta and his partner Vincent, who owned the nightclub, as well as a few levels of the hotel in court over another non-payment of his half of expenses and utility bills. At this point, hot water for the building was already turned off. Georgia Power then turned the power off at the property again, leaving residents freezing at this point. On Valentine's Day of 2012, the residents found themselves being evicted by fire marshals from the property due to the building being unsafe without power. The building was already on backup generators, only providing lights in the hallways, leaving all units dark. Residents were given till 5 p.m. that day to get their belongings and leave the building or else they would be arrested. Without working elevators, furniture and small belongings were carried down flights of stairs. Most residents had nowhere to go and some left furniture behind due to not being able to carry it down the narrow staircase. Since the closure of the building, vandals and scalpers broke into the hotel breaking windows, spraying graffiti on the walls, and becoming a shelter for the homeless. When arriving at the hotel, I've noticed that the door to the former Club Europe was wide open and easy for anyone to walk in. When going up the staircase of each level, some rooms were fully furnished due to the previous residents not being able to carry the furniture down the steps. Some rooms were still in good condition, while others had rotten drywall on the side. In 2018, the property was purchased by Peacock, and it was reported that the building would be turned into a senior housing tower known as a Wavi, but it eventually hit a roadblock due to some of the units being owned by different companies. The owners have since cleared out all the furniture and gutted some of the interiors of the ground floor. In 2019, it was used as a set for the movie Zombieland 2, but since then, nothing much has been done to the property until the present day. As of 2021, no official groundbreaking of the site has started other than the removal of all the windows of the building, which was done shortly after the filming of Zombieland. Fences were also recently installed to keep trespassers out. The website for senior housing project Awavi remains active, with a promo video of the property rendering what people should expect. Well, that's it for today's video. Do you think this building should be demolished? Should it be used as something other than senior housing? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thanks for watching.